How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a very, very, very important topic that also took me several years to compile. And that's because for the past few years, I've actually been collecting a lot of different studies that try to investigate the idea behind microplastics, which is of course related to plastic pollution, and the idea of human health. And specifically focusing on studies that seem to find actual physical evidence, such as for example these images you see right here, that show us microplastic presence in organs and tissues, anything from your heart, your blood, your lungs, to even your brain, placenta, testes, and sperm. So yeah, microplastics seem to be everywhere. And since today we produce approximately 400 million tons of plastics every year, and a lot of this plastic eventually ends up being microplastic because it breaks down, I guess it's not surprising that we're basically saturated with it, with our bodies now containing quite a lot of it by weight. And so this enormous volume we produce every year doesn't just disappear. It first breaks down into microplastics and then also becomes something even smaller referred to as nanoplastics, which has recently been investigated in a very important study that we're going to be discussing today. And since we've also discovered microplastics pretty much everywhere in the world, including the clouds and the depth of the ocean, this is a really important topic that I've been meaning to discuss for a very long time, but because there are like hundreds of different studies I've collected, I just had to kind of divide them into individual topics. And so today we're going to start with that first topic. So basically this is going to be a multi-part video. And today's topic is human health. And that's because for several years now scientists have been finding the same thing. Humans seem to be taking in a shocking amount of synthetic dust and it seems to be in literally every body part. And you can kind of see that it's been discovered in everything in different amounts with the average human today apparently taking in approximately 880 individual microplastic particles every single day, and that's actually on the lower end, with a higher prediction going into thousands up to 70,000 particles just by basically eating and breathing. And unfortunately, these tiny fragments that are often invisible to the naked eye have now permeated virtually every body part inside a typical human, with some of these body parts being really surprising. And so even though we expected them in our lungs and our hearts, we really didn't expect to find them in, for example, placenta or the brain. But one question we don't really have an answer to yet, and that we're kind of going to be tackling today is, what happens when the plastic gets inside? How dangerous is it? And what evidence do we have? And by the way, here's one of the images that kind of shows us that everything we use today seems to have plastics, and so the source of these microplastics are literally all around you. And so in this video, let's go through some of these recent discoveries and discuss some of these studies. But as always, you can pretty much find all of the links in the description below. But I really wanted to focus on one study from 2025 that seems to have finally revealed a specific and somewhat dangerous mechanism by which a lot of these plastics seem to disrupt some of the more vital systems inside our brains. So basically, we now have actual evidence that there might be certain effects on the neuronal function. And maybe let's actually start with that. And mostly because this is a really bizarre discovery. Ever since I went to school and in every single textbook I ever read, when it comes to the brain, it was actually supposed to be protected through what's known as BBB, the blood-brain barrier. A specialized layer of cells designed to keep anything that's harmful from ever reaching the brain. Which is why the majority of stuff that's dangerous to us never goes inside the brain. But turns out that plastics plastic particles, that is, apparently can breach this defense. And at first this was detected in the brains of mice. Here's one of the tiny particles discovered in one of the mice. And was actually found in both young and old mice, confirming that these particles seem to be able to cross the barrier somehow. Now we knew that it can cross a lot of tissues, like for example, here's a microplastic inside the lungs, and that's actually how it can then get into blood, for example. But because these are relatively large particles, they're not supposed to get inside the brain. Yet here we had evidence of actual microplastic inside a brain of a deceased person that apparently died from dementia. And this was a definitive and very important proof that microplastics can indeed cross human blood-brain barrier. This was only discovered in 2024. And so the question here was how? We know that it cannot be from digestion, for example, or from eating something, because even though these particles circulate in the blood, they should be able to cross the BBB. So how are they breaching the defense? Well, apparently, it wasn't through ingestion, it was through inhalation. And that's because on average, we might be inhaling over 70,000 tiny microplastics on top of everything else we absorb through eating. And though a lot of them do end up inside the lungs and then go inside the blood, 
some of the smaller particles can actually enter the brain directly. And we now have evidence for how that's done as well. It seems to be through the olfactory or the smell pathway, because as the particles are being inhaled, some of them seem to be able to use the olfactory nerves or the smelling nerves as a direct highway into the brain. And here we had actual physical evidence. Some of the microplastics, including fragments and fibers made out of nylon and polypropylene, were detected in the olfactory bulbs in several dead humans. So basically some of the nasal nerves and some of the nerves responsible for smell contain these particles inside. But what's even scarier is that how fast all of this seems to happen. Some of the recent animal research, specifically in mice, showed that this invasion seems to happen in just hours following the consumption or inhalation. So basically, in between you breathing the particles and the particles getting inside the brain, it really only takes a few hours. And interestingly, this even triggers the immune system because some of the immune cells then try to capture these particles and sometimes create certain traffic jams inside the brain, which unfortunately, in the long term, may create problems. And so in many of these animal models, animals exposed to a lot of nanoplastics very often showed diverse neurotoxic effects, including huge amounts of anxiety, a lot of cognitive dysfunctions, including something resembling dementia, and a lot of memory issues. And since a lot of human patients where this was discovered were also suffering from dementia, right now there seems to be quite a lot of correlation. Now we cannot say that this is a causation yet, but these are definitely unnerving and somewhat scary discoveries. But this most recent study from September of 2025 goes a little bit further. Here the study identifies a very specific target certain microplastics seem to affect. With this study focusing on what's known as polystyrene nanoplastics, PS and PS. These are basically microplastics that became even smaller and are usually nanometers in size. And turns out they seem to have the effect on mitochondria, some of the most important organelles inside our cells. We normally call them powerhouses of the cell because they produce a lot of energy, but they're also responsible for the overall control of the cell as well. You can learn about some of the coolest discoveries about mitochondria in one of the videos in the description. But we also know that a lot of different disorders, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, is often associated with mitochondrial dysfunction. So we know that whatever affects mitochondria can produce a lot of different brain-related problems. But in this case, the scientists studying these nanoplastics discovered several mechanisms that seem to produce neurotoxicity. For example, they discovered that many of these nanoplastics seem to affect what's known as electron transport chain the internal assembly of proteins that runs the energy production line and allows the cell to produce a lot of energy. And so in this case, these nanoplastics seem to have a negative effect on this, potentially serving as a kind of a selective blocker, because they don't really kill the individual ATC components, but they seem to block them, specifically between the so-called complex 1 and complex 3. And so this results in a kind of a chemical disruption, which physically interferes with the production of energy and even blocks the motion of other proteins, including ubiquinone. These often act as a kind of a mobile electron carriers. And this implies that these nanoplastics very likely cause neuronal damage, or at least cause the neurons to produce less energy, reducing the oxygen consumption, and thus resulting in less neuronal activity. And because in this study this was observed in the synaptic mitochondria, or basically mitochondria essential for communication between brain cells, here, in theory, this could definitely have effect on things like, for example, learning and memory. Now, chances are this affects other neurons too, but because here the evidence is only from the synaptic mitochondria, right now this is the only proof we have. But the suggestion here is that nanoplastics seem to dramatically influence brain energy metabolism, with the observed effects in the lab even being visible at very low concentrations. So basically, it doesn't even take that many nanoplastics for the neurons to be disturbed. Now, because this is a very recent study and because this is essentially one of the first such discoveries, right now we don't really know much else. We just know that this is a serious issue, and I'm actually surprised not a lot of medical studies seem to cover this, because of all the things happening in the world, there's one thing that actually hasn't changed much, and that's plastic pollution. We actually discussed in one of the previous videos that apparently humans have now produced more plastic than the entire biomass on the planet by a huge margin. You can learn about this in one of the videos in the description. But here the brain is just one of the concerns, because a lot of additional research solidifies disturbing links between plastic exposure and cardiovascular, reproductive and developmental health. And so I guess let's briefly discuss all of them as well. Let's start with the heart. And so here in one of the recent studies from 2024, by following 260 patients with fatty deposits in their heart, or specifically plaques removed from their clogged arteries, scientists discovered at least 
half of them contained microplastics on the inside. And you can kind of see this visualized in this image. This is a cross section of a typical plague. And so half of these contained polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, which kind of hints that in some cases maybe the clogging was actually the result of microplastics. And so the presence of microplastics inside the body was associated with four and a half times increased risk of a major heart problem. And many of the clogs removed in the last few years have all contained some kind of a microplastic. Moreover, in a separate research, back in March of 2025, scientists have also discovered a very bizarre correlation. Communities with much higher environmental plastic pollution had a dramatic increase in a lot of heart-related and blood-related problems, for example, diabetes, high blood pressure, and stroke. Now, correlation is not a causation, but it's nevertheless a very unnerving discovery. Okay, we've discussed brain and the heart, let's talk about the next most important organ. Uh, your testes, or your reproductive system. Because here, researchers have also found microplastic in every single human semen sample. Now, I don't really want to know how they did this, but in a study from 2024, high levels of PVC were discovered in both dog testicles, which actually correlated with much lower sperm counts, and human sperm. And so this could also be one of the contributions to the low fertility rates as well. But a much more unnerving discovery is actually in regards to placenta. Now, placenta, like the BBB or the blood-brain barrier, is supposed to protect the baby from pretty much any toxin. It's sort of like this shield inside the mother that protects the baby for nine months. But the study from January of 2025 discovered that placentas from premature births contain 50% higher concentration of microplastics compared to placentas from full-term births. Or just to rephrase this, it looks like microplastics also seem to cause premature births. And possibly because PVC and a lot of other particles often cause inflammation in human cells and may prompt early birth. Now, once again, correlation not causation yet, but a very unnerving one. Because once again, we have more evidence linking plastics with human health risk. And here, I'm not even discussing other studies that found plastics in the lungs and even the bones with obviously additional health effects as well. Or studies on mice that even found that microplastics tend to change behavior in young and old mice, making them just a little bit more neurotic. But I mean, this image right here pretty much summarizes everything. Plastics everywhere. Every single organ, every single tissue. But despite these somewhat alarming findings, scientists still are not entirely certain on what's happening in terms of effects. We still cannot definitively say that the plastics are direct cause of some of these problems and some of these diseases, and we can only draw correlational conclusions. But in this case, the research so far has been very challenging. First of all, there's a lot of complexity. Plastics are just so complex, and there are so many different types, that it's not even clear what causes what and how. They do come in different shapes, sizes, surface characteristics, and molecular composition, and on top of this, they also change in different ways when exposed to different weather environments, or when exposed to the sun. And so trying to bundle all of these microplastics into one single phenomenon is actually just not going to work. Then we also have the measurement difficulty as well. Trying to accurately measure and analyze microplastics inside biological samples is super challenging. And as of today, as of late 2025, there are no commonly accepted or standardized protocols on how to prepare, process, or even detect and analyze microplastics inside human tissue or really inside any tissue. This is such a new phenomenon that nobody has any idea how to study it. But even with just a few studies we already have, the data seems to paint a very clear and very worrying picture that plastics are definitely bad for us. And because the volume of plastics is expected to triple by 2060, it means that the exposure to microplastics is going to be unavoidable and the concentration inside a typical human body is only going to climb. And so given the pervasive presence of plastics in our bodies and the now documented neurological disruption, along with the strong association with various heart diseases, reproductive risks and potentially some other risks, we need to start coming up with some kind of a solution, possibly some regulations and laws, but most importantly, more science. We need more studies that can actually understand what's going on and how to maybe prevent this. Because for all we know, microplastics have been hijacking our brains for the past few decades. And for all we know, maybe they've been causing way more health problems than we actually imagined. And so right now we need to take major steps toward addressing this crisis in order to figure this out and to stop it before it's too late. 
which means that we'll definitely come back in the next part and discuss some other discoveries in regards to plastics that are maybe not as dangerous and not as unnerving, but are still very interesting. Specifically, maybe some solutions and some organisms that can help us solve this once and for all. And so subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you for watching. Maybe support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM it directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye. Oh, time to drink another sip from that plastic bottle.